Do you want a single engine turboprop that can cruise into the flight levels with cabin class style? If so, Carinado's X-Plane 11 version of the Piper Malibu Meridian might be for you. Welcome to this FS Elite review of Carinado's newly released PA46 500 TP Malibu Meridian for X-Plane 11, which we'll call the Meridian for brevity. I'm Lee. And I'm Tim. You might know us from our YouTube channel, Flight Brothers FT. If you'd like to add a new single engine turboprop to your hangar, the difficult question is which one? This is a question faced by real world owners as well, but with an entry price of $34.95 US dollars, Carinado gives you all the fun without the million dollar headache. Let's start with the textures, a strong point for this aircraft. Included is five HD liveries and one blank livery. November 46 Hotel Romeo is a largely bare metal livery, which makes for some great reflections at sunrise and sunset. Textures are highly detailed PBR, but exterior views do pixelate if you zoom extremely close. The beautiful model is extremely smooth and has accurate details. Honestly, I couldn't stop taking screenshots from every angle. It has a well-modeled prop, the exhaust, and all the other external features you would expect, including the finer details like vortex generators on the leading edge, landing gear that includes the small parts of hoses, you have rivets that are visible, as well as static wicks. However, these ones are not dynamic, and you also have the aircraft antenna. The starboard wing pod contains the weather radar. It's somewhat obtrusive compared to the TBM and the PC-12 pod. However, the new Piper M600 model switches to the smaller wing integrated pod like those competitors. External shots show two pilots with animated autonomous head motions, shown when static elements are off. Both wear Bose headphones. The pilot head motions are more realistic than a lot of other external pilots on other payware aircraft. This is also Librain compatible which requires the downloading of a separate Librain plugin available at Carinado's website. And finally, VR compatibility rounds out the Meridian. Moving inside, we have a split cabin door that is animated. It can be activated either from an interior click region or from the graphical user interface. The interior has a very high level of detail with excellent textures. Lighting is very convincing. And as with other Carinado products, we have found that the uh, interior looks so good if you put images on Instagram, occasionally people have mistaken them for shots from the real aircraft. The cabin features also animated window shades that will go full up or full down, although they do show the full range of motion when they're in transit. You have a fold out passenger table on the starboard side. And on a kind of neat detail, you have working individual light switches at each passenger seat position. The pilot and co-pilot armrests are also animated to retract and stow away. Adding to the lighting features, the cockpit dome lights are adjustable, as are the instrumentation lights. The domes are accessed from the light housing itself or the dimmer knob above the overhead light panel. Instrumentation lights dim or increase by clicking multiple times. The Meridian cockpit also has movable visors for both pilot and co-pilot. The wing taxi lights have a mode allowing for the wingtip lights to pulse or be fixed on for taxi. Sounds is always one of my favorite areas, and Carinado has done a good job giving us an F mod here. We have an extremely quiet interior, which makes it very pleasant to fly, although you do still hear the engine sounds. We have a very nice startup sound, but it has a rather abrupt transition to idling, at least when listened to from the interior. Uh, from the exterior, you have a longer spool up and transition.
The Meridian contains seven Adobe files for documentation. Uh, one of those is just your legal copyrights. And of course it has the Karen Auto modeled G1000. So that document is contained. You have emergency procedures, normal procedures, performance table, and a reference document, as well as recommended settings for X-Plane 11. And we'd really be curious, do you guys print these off? Or do you just keep them in a PDF accessible from your desktop? Um, I know we sometimes do different things there, Tim. I, I tend to print some off, but after a few times in the aircraft, I kind of don't look at them and then I use the PDF version. Yeah, I tend to print the uh, checklist and sometimes the uh, cruise charts since you kind of tune these GA aircraft a little more. That's Those are the ones I like. Right, right. So comment down below uh, what you guys do. Uh, this has what I would say standard Carinado documentation. It has everything you need, but it doesn't go into great detail from systems. So the data, the information's there, and that's about what you get. All right, so uh, speaking of sort of the Carinado standard, the graphical user interface or GUI menu is stationary on the left hand side of the screen which uh, I've confessed to Lee is actually something I don't like I wish it would hide away um, you've got there basically three menus and if you have used any Carinado product you're probably very familiar with this you have the autopilot you have a view menu and you have another menu that does all of the doors reflections and the ground static features Static elements that are displayed from the GUI are cones, exhaust, and pedo covers. These can only be activated from the GUI and you must have the parking brake on. As I'd mentioned previously, the Carinado G1000 is based on the default X-Plane 11 G1000, except it has a few interesting features in this iteration. It contains the control unit or GCU 475 in a pedestal mounted interface for the G1000. This replaces the standard G1000 bezel that you would see for inputting your flight plan data and navigating the menu, navigating the menu screens. It also has the AFCS control unit, which is a GMC 710. And this is your autopilot panel. This sits in front of the throttle quadrant and below the G1000 MFD. Uh, the keypad has a dummy alphanumeric keyboard when looking at the 475 when you click on it in the 3d cockpit it'll pop up in a 2d for you to work with but really all you're using is the outer and inner knobs on both uh in both positions and then you'll click to close it down so i have mixed feelings about this i i like it in the 2D environment, being able to use it that way. However, some additional features with being able to use the alphanumeric keyboard would have been a, a little bit more appreciated, I think. Yeah, I was super excited about it until I went to start typing in my next waypoint and said, like, what? I have to use the knobs? <laughs> it was a yeah. It was a cruel tease. There is that. All right, so uh, at this point, let's talk about the flight dynamics. Just in general, I found it very enjoyable to fly. It was pretty easy to fly. The only thing that I found a little bit challenging was um, the viewpoint in this, I would consider to be a little bit more like uh, a car versus an SUV. You're sitting pretty low, that PT6 sticks out a long way, and so uh, visibility for landing and whatnot um, I landed a little harder than I normally do with the PC-12, for example, and so uh, I'm going to blame it on viewpoint. <laughs> it's my story and I'm sticking sure. to it. Uh, but it does have realistic behavior compared to the real airplane. They have realistic weight and balance. Uh, apparently they tested it with several real pilots for maximum accuracy. We have a 185 knot VNE with a max ceiling of flight level 300. And that gives us about a 1,000 nautical mile range. Yeah, Tim, and with that range, I think if you're really going to extend that, you're going to have to fly at a reduced cruise setting. In the documentation, there are three cruise settings listed. Uh, you have a maximum, a intermediate, and a low. 
Max is obviously with the throttle running wide open. The intermediate crew setting you set for a thousand foot pounds of torque on the engine and low being 500 foot pounds. Now between max and intermediate, Piper in the real world claims about 260 knots true. I saw a lot of 240, 242 knots is what I uh, experienced both at max and intermediate. There was really little difference there. But when you go down to that low cruise power of 500 foot pounds, you're, um, you're really in bonanza territory for speed, uh, if I could say that. I also did some power on and power off stalls at uh, max takeoff weight. Uh, the power off stall, it broke right and kind of rolled. However, you were able to maintain wings level or recover it through there. And with the power on stall, it, it kind of, it, it mushed. When you hold the nose up, it just kind of falls forward. And again, roll authority was very positive, allowed me to keep the wings level. Um, I was actually quite surprised at the power on stall characteristics. I was expecting, I think, more yaw and a little bit more instability than it actually displayed. All right. Well, it's got some nice big control surfaces back there, so I'm not true. Uh, I'm not too stunned by that. But uh, I think at this point we have moved off of the technical details and now we just are gonna chat about it for a little bit so I think one of the most interesting things about this is a comment someone made to us years ago that uh, I don't even remember what they're refer referring to they said oh, it flies like a Carinado and I thought at the time that they meant oh maybe all Carinado stuff feels the same that is not accurate but I think what they really meant is Carinado sort of has a, a formula like all Carinado aircraft there, there's a very standard package like these are the features you can expect there's a very high quality level and texturing you can expect um, and that's kind of been my experience is, is that what you've seen with Carinado Lee? Yeah absolutely I mean this is our th third or fourth Carinado product now we went from having zero to actually having several in a rather short time span. And yeah, I agree completely with the modeling and everything. There are a couple details when you start looking at other developers and when you fly those aircraft, you, you kind of have an aha moment. You're like, oh, they included that. The Carinado doesn't necessarily have that. And that's not to say it's bad, it's just different. And I wonder, uh, like you and I were discussing recently, Maybe this has to do with Carinado is one of those developers that develop both flight sim or sorry, um, FSX, P3D and X-Plane aircraft. There aren't a lot that are moving across both platforms. Right. And so, yeah, we were wondering if maybe that helps them uh, maintain the cross-platform abilities to not go super in-depth and I, I think at the end of the day and this is something viewers we, we'd love to know what you think about it so throw it in the comments um, do you like the system depth of the Carinado I mean I frequently see on forums people who don't like it because they want more but mm -hmm. then there's someone there defending it they're like nope love it absolutely love it and then there's always always the uh, reality expansion pack crowd who's like, you know, oh, Carinado and a rep, bulletproof, sure. gotta have it. So uh, we'd really like to know what you guys think. Uh, obviously, Carinado's been making a huge catalog of aircraft, and so their business is probably doing all right, which tells me their formula is working for them. So again, we'd like to know what you think. So uh, what other sort of things do we notice here, Lee? Um, I know we kind of complained that... Uh, the the gcu control unit and the pedestal kind of sure. faked us out that the keyboard didn't work um but other than that did you how did you find using that interface versus like the bezel mounts no I, I think it was for me it eradicated the problem that king air has if you've flown the b200s or the king air 350s oh. you have to you have to look down to spin that heading so being able to look down, because this is sitting in the pedestal next to you, click it, and your sigh really says all that needs to be said about it. Um, in the real world, sometimes what works doesn't work in a sim, and this is a prime example. In addition to that, 
with Carinado uh, talking about this uh, Carinado formula, I'm going to unofficially call it. Um, they have the autopilot. And with the 3D cockpit on this, I, I didn't really... It doesn't add anything to me, the autopilot panel. Same here. I didn't, uh, maybe, I didn't use the pop-out uh, autopilot. Right. It's just so easy to use the one that's there on the uh, on the panel. So um, aside from that, I did fine. And of course, I run the SimCoder's head shake. So this is my problem and not everyone's. The uh, standby altimeter, which is on the left side of the PFD, uh, the click region for me was a little bit small, even in um, extremely light turbulence. So... I mean, you can get rid of that and have less of a problem. So uh, one of the things I could not shake while flying this was comparing it to Carinado's PC-12, which is, um, oh, wow. It is probably the aircraft I have, of my own volition, gone and flown the most this year. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, that's the one I just jump in and fly uh, the most often. I, I went and flew it almost every single island in the Caribbean with it this year. And so every time I was getting in the Meridian, I kept kind of be, uh, wanting that feel. And um, it was very different. And that's where I came up with telling you that comparison of the Meridian's kind of the car and the PC-12's kind of the SUV. Because the, uh, f for example, I was doing the uh, Caribbean and the PC-12. You sit relatively high, very good visibility, I was doing a lot of sightseeing. The Meridian, I had a much harder time sightseeing, so I started using some of the external views and crews to kind of look around. Which, Tim, speaking of the Carinado formula, I do like their external views that they have. I do wish the GUI would kind of retract back and, and disappear, but I do like it because it allows me to have extra keypads. So if I want to look like at that belly external that they have or at the top of the tail, you're not using your keypad for that view. Right, and the main reason I don't like that GUI, it's not just a weird preference of mine. I do a lot of screenshots. Sure. And I don't want to see it in the screenshots. Um, so, you know, the, the model is so beautiful. If you get the right weather and X-Plane, some good scenery, you throw Carinado in there, you're like, man, this is 98% convincing to reality. And then there's right. that menu. You're like, well, so much for the uh, willful suspension of disbelief. That's true. I mean, some will argue you can always edit it or crop it, but uh, that's one more thing to do when you're converting files from, what is it, GIFs or GIFs to JPEGs. And Yep, the, the lazy it, factor kicks in at that point. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, for sure. And, you know, one of the other points that you bring up with the PC-12 is air hauler. So you have the Carinado PC-12, this obviously, I mean, they're both modeled after real aircraft. It might be worth mentioning the PC-12 for air hauler has, um, what, almost twice the cargo capacity. Okay, so we've got a mix of air hauler and real world conversation right here because uh, air hauler is trying to replicate the real world, so we're going to overlap a bit. Um, right. The main competitors to this Meridian are the TBM and the PC-12 in the real world. <laughs> I, right. You know, an X-Plane, you don't have to be as practical in your aircraft choices. So they're kind of a competitor, but, you know, you might also get on and be like, nah, I want to buy a 767 today. So, um, right. for, and, and the crazy thing, all three of these are PT6 powered turboprops. So it's interesting that they're, the performance and utilization is just so wildly different that uh, that PC-12 you can carry almost you know two tons depending on the range you're going. You're mm -hmm. not going to carry two tons of payload in a Malibu, um, right? And you're certainly not going to go a thousand miles with it. Um, what, no. What's the? Did you do any long flights with your Malibu? No, actually, I didn't. Uh, I think you had the longest one. Oh, okay. San Francisco thing. All right, so I went from San Francisco to Seattle with it. I had a payload of about 300-ish, just a little under 300 pounds. I mm -hmm. took the... Uh, oh, I, I had the fuel up to max takeoff. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I came up with my fuel calculation. I think I did the um, estimated time... Based sure. off a of sky vector plan, and then used the 
the load menu, which uh, if, if you're watching this and did not know, the Carinados all load from the standard X-Plane weight and balance menu. There's not a custom thing for loading. It's, it's not a big deal, but it is one of those things where you're like, oh, because a lot of payware does include that. True. But uh, so I just did the fuel that way. When I landed, I had plenty on board. The G1000 though did a nice job uh, with its fuel calculations. I don't know, Lee, if you uh, if you noticed in flight plan, you can go from narrow view to wide view, and it will take up the full width of the screen. Oh, yep, and yep. You did it. You checked it out. Yes, I did. Okay, awesome. So you you saw those uh, fuel calculations. Right. And did you know you have to reset it? Because uh, like I, I was up at uh, cruise and it's saying I'm going to arrive with negative fuel. That's a problem. So I adjusted my uh, performance and then the numbers didn't move. And that's when I went to the G1000 and found, oh, I need to uh, reset the fuel calculation and that it was accurate. So it wasn't a real time uh, calculation. Yeah, I was sub uh, two hour flight times and uh, I was doing max, basically max takeoff weight. So the fuel to distance wasn't really that big of a deal for me. I wasn't really pushing that range. All right. So I guess that's probably most of our all around impressions. It's a, a beautiful aircraft. It flies very nicely. If you like Carinados, you would like this one. If you don't like Carinados, you know what you're in for here. Um, so if you <laughs> <laughs> exactly either way leave us a comment below let us know what you think of carinado's new meridian or carinado in general and uh, if you want to stay up with all the latest and greatest information on the flight sim community you definitely want to click subscribe and add fsle.net to your internet browser favorites so until next time i'm tim and i'm lee remember plan the flight and fly the plan <laughs>